नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ द डिस्कशन ऑन टीडीएस रिलेटेड कॉम्प्लायसेस फॉर आर टैक्स पेयर्स वी हैव विद अस मिस दीपिका मित्तल कमिश्नर ऑफ इनकम टैक्स सेंट्रलाइज्ड प्रोसेसिंग सेंटर टीडीएस इन दिस सेशन वी शैल बी डिस्कसिंग एट लेंथ एंड इन डिटेल द कॉम्प्लायंस दैट इज एक्सपेक्टेड फ्रॉम टैक्स पेयर्स इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ टीडीएस ऑन परचेस और सेल ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी मैम इन द केस ऑफ Uh, TDS uh, during the purchase or sale of a property, what is the form that has to be filled by a buyer when the seller is an NRI, a non-resident Indian, and when the value of the property is in excess of rupees fifty lakhs? See, in case the seller is an NRI, form twenty seven Q has been has to be filed by the buyer using a TAN. Okay, if the buyer does not have a TAN. Uh, he or she needs to apply for and obtain a tan deduct tax under section 195 and thereafter file a uh, tds statement in form 27q it is very important to note that the form for making a deduction in respect of uh, uh, non resident uh, especially in cases of uh, sale of property is not 26qb but it is 27q a lot of time people are making this mistakes okay uh, ma'am there there are instances wherein uh, the 26q uh, qb qc and qd statements were filed but are pending processing uh, so in uh, what is the average amount of time that it takes to process these statements and and how does a taxpayer know what the state uh, status of these applications are see uh, forms 26qb 26qc and qd are statement come challans and these are processed only when the chalan corresponding chalan is available in traces portal like i said earlier these forms are also furnished on the nsdl website and there is definitely a gap of around 2 days like for all chalans which are come normally all these statements are processed within 0 to 7 uh, within 7 days of uh, their filing and in case uh, these are not processed within 7 days a taxpayer can log into their uh, uh, log into their uh, account and place a uh, place a request under resolution uh, option okay and ma'am in respect of form 26 qb and qc uh, what kinds of corrections are allowed to be made in these forms and how can these corrections be done see in form 26 qb a buyer can make a correction and in case of 26 qc a correction can be raised by a tenant by logging into the traces portal the uh, the corrections which can be made uh, uh, are uh, be, uh, are fall in the category of pans of buyer and seller or uh, landlord uh, landlord and tenant uh, then amount paid or credited date of payment and credit and the date of tax deduction okay uh, and ma'am and ma'am there have been instances where in, in form 26qb or uh, 26qc uh, the pan of the buyer and the seller were interchanged Uh, by mistake uh, in that case who is uh, eligible to actually ch uh, change this or make the correction in such a circumstance uh, the pans of the buyer and uh, seller and tenant and landlord have been, have been changed the person whose details were given in the place of the buyer and the landlord uh, is the one who can uh, log into the traces website and make the change okay and ma'am does a taxpayer need to pay the demand generated in the case of form 26 qb qc or qd uh, does he need to file a new form 26 qb qc qd for this or or if not what is the correct procedure for that uh, uh, see no new form 26 qb qc or qd is required to be filed a demand in case has to be paid through a demand payment link which is available on the nsdl website uh, for the particular form okay and and ma'am in in case of transactions with joint parties uh, in that case how how is it uh, how does the compliance with form 26 qb work see each buyer has to file a separate form Q, uh, 26 qb for each seller mentioned in the sale deed or agreement there can be different scenarios uh, i mean i would like to explain it in, uh, by using different scenarios one scenario can be that there is one buyer and two sellers in such a case a buyer will have to file Two form twenty six Q B for each seller, giving the proportionate amount of the uh, proportionate amount involved as per the agreement. Another scenario can be there are two buyers and two sellers. 
In this case also, each buyer has to form, file two form 26 QB giving the proportionate amount for the uh, amount involved in the transaction, uh, amount involved in the transaction as per the sale deed. So, in all, in such a scenario where there are two buyers and two sellers, there will be four form 26 QB which have to be filed. Uh, and ma'am, in respect of form 26 QB, when the payment is being made in installments, uh, how does a taxpayer comply with uh, the requirements of 26 QB in this case? For every installment paid, a separate form 26 QB needs to be filed by deducting the tax at the specified rate. In a case where payment is made through installments, but a common form 26 QB is filed at the end of the uh, uh, at the time of the final payment, a default will be generated in the system on account of payment interest, late payment interest, and late filing. Okay, uh, and ma'am, in circumstances where excess TDS was paid by the uh, buyer of the property, how can a refund of this excess payment be uh, obtained? So, a refund can be obtained by, by the taxpayer by logging in uh, at the Traces portal and furnishing Form 26B on the Traces website and the refund request can be authenticated using Aadhaar based uh, OTP or a digital signature certificate. Okay. And when the application is submitted, uh, let us say an application is submitted before the uh, assessing officer uh, for the refund of excess TDS, what are the documents that have to be submitted to the assessing officer when such an application is submitted? In such a case, uh, uh, the taxpayer is required to submit a signed copy of uh, Form 26B, a cancelled check and a, pan, uh, and a copy of PAN to the assessing officer within 14 days of submitting the request. Okay. And uh, are there any circumstances in which the refund request is cancelled or rejected by the assessing officer? Um, uh, AO can reject the refund request if the documents are not furnished uh, within 14 days and also in a case where a demand is pending against the bank. So that was an interesting discussion on the most important compliances to be done by taxpayers in respect of purchase or sale of property. I am sure this discussion shall benefit our taxpayers viewing us from across the country. I thank all of you for tuning into Sambad. Do follow us on our social media handles on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn and YouTube to keep yourself updated about the latest developments in respect of direct taxes. Until the next time from Sambad, thank you and Jai Hind.